Hi everyone, my name is Ellie Richards and we're here in the Resident Artist Studios. I'm a new resident here and today I'm sharing my space with you and I've gathered materials to demonstrate how to make a kite. And here's an example of that kite. We're gonna make this kite that will go outside later and fly using materials that we can gather from around the house. So let's get started. The first step is gathering materials. So I want you to know that this is something where you really can start to think outside of the box. I'm gonna show you a few things that I was able to gather around my house, but I want you to think about what you can gather around your house that, is, that might not be the exact same. So let's start with sticks. In order to make our kite frame, we need some structural elements right here. So I went outside and looked for just some natural elements. I was looking at trees that had straight branches that I can then start to take off little twigs and have myself a straight component to make our kite frame. So that's one option. Just walk outside, see what you can find. I like to look for also branches that are very light and that also may look dead or are on the ground already so that you're not plucking off a, a live growing branch. Another great option for sticks are barbecue skewers. So I found these at our local grocery store in the barbecue aisle. And these are extra long bamboo skewers. And I have to say, if you can get your hands on these, it'll make a very nice kite frame. These are lightweight, and so the wind can pick them up with the kite and have a great flying experience. So first we need sticks. Another important element in kite making is string. So string, you can choose a lot of different options. This is embroidery floss. I have uh, artificial sinew, which is a nice sort of synthetic, natural looking material that's really lightweight. It also comes in a spool. We also have fishing line. So there's a lot of options for string. Again, look for something that feels nice in your hands, something that is lightweight and, and comfortable. So those are the two main materials. Um, additionally, you're gonna need tape. So this is masking tape. You can also use packing tape. And um, either of these options are gonna work great for you. Let's move on to some of our tools. Having a pair of scissors is really great. Another option would be a utility knife with a blade on the end. These are gonna be really great to cut through your plastic bags. Having a Sharpie marker is always nice to do some outlining of your kite uh, template. And then lastly, uh, a ruler or a tape measure. So, have I talked about glues yet? I don't think so. Um, here we go. So I want to highly recommend that you use hot glue for this project. Hot glue um, is gonna make life easier. So if you can get your hands on a hot glue gun, that's great. If not, Elmer's glue or craft glue will work just fine. It's just gonna take your project a little bit longer because you have to wait for those glues to dry, for them to be helpful to you. So, one of the more important elements to your kite is this plastic material here, which you may recognize from your local grocery store. These are plastic bags that um, a lot of times you walk out of the grocery store and have your apples and bananas piled in here. Now these bags are there's a lot of different ways that you can recycle them. They're not great for the environment. So one way that we can take these bags and give them a new life is to make a kite out of them. So see if you can round up a recycled plastic bag. So now that you've gathered all of your materials, uh, let's start by building the kite frame. This is a really simple operation in which we're going to recreate the lowercase letter T. So one thing we're gonna need is your two straight sticks, which I have here. 
Now I've found that using a regular grocery shopping bag, a good dimension to shoot for is around 15 inches for your longest length. So I've got my ruler here and I'm gonna measure to 15 inches. And all I'm gonna do is snap that to that length. Your shorter length needs to be about five inches less. So let's measure to 10. And snap that. So now we're going to create the lowercase t. You wanna place your cross member about one third of the way down. So somewhere in there looks good to me. Now here's a small tip. Cutting a little notch into the middle of one of these is going to make the connection stronger. So I recommend using a utility knife if you feel, with parental supervision, if you feel um, that you wanna make that an extra strong connection. So one thing that you're gonna do is estimate where the middle of that, this stick is, and then take your utility knife and carve away from yourself a little notch. It's really important to never have the sharp end of the knife coming towards your fingers. Now that little groove will rest nicely on the longer length. The next step is to create an even stronger connection. So you're gonna use string and you're gonna wrap this connection so that it's nice and strong. Now this is where hot glue can really come in handy. So I'll put a little bit of hot glue right on that connection. And remember to place it about one third of the way down. A little bit of pressure and we should be good to go. Now, we definitely wanna reinforce that joint. So I'm gonna take some pink embroidery floss and wrap this around as best I can. Now you're gonna wrap this little connection and the best way that I can explain to do this is just to make repeated crisscrosses. Any way that you do it is going to be helpful. So just kind of keep wrapping that string around until you feel like it's nice and sturdy. And then when you have a nice coverage, you can cut your string. Oh, I need stronger scissors your string and put another dab of hot glue to make sure your string stays in place. All right. After you have your nice lowercase t, what you're going to do is create an outline around the edge of your kite and this is going to help us give a place to fold the plastic to. So what you need is a very long length of string. I want to do this sort of wrapping motion uh, around three different times. So this blue thread should work. If you're working with hot glue, now is a good time to put a little bit of a dab of hot glue right here and attach this string to it. Another option is to simply tie a knot at the end there. And I have, I'm gonna do both. I'm gonna tie a knot and do a little dab of hot glue. Now, my, my sticks have little raw edges from where I sort of broke them in half. And those raw edges are gonna come into play and really be helpful to me in this next step. If you're working with sticks that have a very clean edge, 
um, or maybe you found them in nature and they have a very rounded um, edge. One thing that will be helpful for you to do is to cut notches in each of these locations so that this string has a little tiny home to rest in as you wrap it around its edges. So right now I'm lucky because my sticks have raw edges that help me keep it in place. And I have to say that this is one of the more challenging aspects of the kite making process because if you let go of your string and the string becomes loose, you lose your kite's structure. So one thing I'm going to do to help myself out a little bit is to cut a notch in the bottom here and that will show you what that's like to cut a notch. And simply all you're going to do is cut a V-shaped groove. Let's see. When you're cutting your grooves, if you lay your T flat on the table, your grooves will also be parallel with the table so that your string can kind of follow that path. So let's do this again. So once more, let's try wrapping the string around the edges so that we create our kite's outline. Remember to keep it nice and stretched so it's very stiff looking. And this time I have a nice groove for the string to follow. I'm getting close to the end of my string. So I'm going to find a place to pinch it to hold it so that it doesn't become loose. And then I'm going to get my trusty glue gun and add a dab of glue. On these edges. If you don't have a glue gun, your option is to take this string and carefully tie a tight knot around one of the edges. The important part is keeping this outer string just so it's nice and tight like that, okay? If you don't have a glue gun and you need to keep all of this nice and tight, take this string without letting go of it and tie a nice strong knot. Afterwards, you can take Elmer's glue or sticky tack glue and reinforce each of these edges with a little dab of glue and that'll ensure that this string won't fall off on these edges. So congratulations. If you've followed along this far, you've created your kite frame. And the next step is to create the kite sail is what we're going to be doing next. The first step is to cut off the handles of the bag. Now you can do that by sort of grabbing on, grouping them together, grabbing them like so, and taking your scissors and cutting those off. That's a simple way to do it. And the next step is going to be cutting two lines up the sides of your bag so that we can have a flat sheet of plastic to work with. So I'm going to take my scissors and cut all the way up. Another option is taking your utility knife and cutting through the plastic just a straight line like that. However you do it, your objective is to have a flat sheet of plastic 
so that you can take your kite frame and place it on there with ease. So it looks like I have plenty to work with. Now that you have a nice flat sheet that's gonna be your kite sail, I want you to look at your kite frame and frame out what you want your kite to look like. Do you want it to be a solid brown color? Do you want it to have some graphics on it? If you're really looking to maybe take this kite to another level of creativity, you could join two different colors of bags together. There's a lot of options here for design, so I just want you to keep that in mind. We're gonna keep it simple in this demo, and I'm going to choose a nice blank area for my kite, and maybe I can go in with a Sharpie and add more designs on. So place your kite down, and grab your ruler or straight edge, and what you want is at least an inch of extra going all the way around your kite. So I'm just gonna place the width of my ruler and trace that out all the way around. The next step is gonna be cutting out where I made my marks. So I'm going to gently cut my bag and I'm on a work surface and I can cut onto this work surface. But if you're at home, be really careful to put a piece of cardboard down so you don't uh, put a mark in a very nice table. I have to say using the utility knife is my preferred method for cutting through plastic bag. It's very smooth. A nice clean cut. Now, save your scraps. These will come into play a little bit later, okay? After you've cut your kite sail that's a little bit oversized from your kite frame, you're gonna start taping these extra edges over, and this will be our method of securing the sail to the frame. So what you're gonna do is gently fold it over this nice stringed line that you've created. And then take your tape, and I, what I've been doing is taking two small pieces and just giving yourself a little bit of a connection. That's gonna make life easier down the road. So once you've done that one side, giving yourself a few connections, then maybe take a longer stretch of tape and make sure you really press down to create a secure connection. When this kite is flying in the air, we don't want any air coming into these spaces. So make sure you really get in there and make sure that tape is secure. And I work in opposite. So I started here and I'm gonna go to the opposite side here and pull it nice and stretched. Should give myself two little spots. Any tape will do. I'm using a masking tape. It happens to be green, which is very fun for me. Um, but you can find a sort of masking tape like this or packing tape. Lots of different tapes will work just fine.
Okay, so we're getting close to seeing our finished kite. One really important step is to create the fly line. And the fly line is in place so that it can connect to the very, very long string that we'll hold in our hand as the kite takes sail. So in order to do that, what we need are two strings. And those strings are gonna be cut to be just about five inches longer than the length of the sticks that you created. So I have mine ready to go. That's one, it's got five inches of extra length there. And then we're gonna go this way and five extra inches of length. So we have to attach the fly line. Um, one easy way is just to use little bits of tape and to really press down on them so that the, that tape is nice and secure. Another option is to tie your string to your frame. That's a really great option. Um, I might also reinforce with a little bit of hot glue. Now you have the beginnings of a fly line. In a perfect world, you really want all four strings to be equally tensioned. So you can see here, this is quite loose. So what I might do is take this down and add another piece of tape so that all four strings are equally tensioned and tight. Okay, so now that we have this, we have a point of, that's intersecting. And this point of intersection is where we're going to tie our string line to. Anything on a spool will be really helpful. If you don't have a spool, you can always make your own spool by wrapping string around a toilet paper roll or a paper towel roll or even a stick. There's a lot of different ways. It's not tricky, it's just, thinking about how you can um, organize a very long length of string. So try and find a spool just like this, and you're going to attach the very end of that string to your fly line where those two strings intersect. So I'm gonna find that spot right there, and I'm going to tie this string to connect those. All right, almost there. Tie a nice double knot. Oops. Okay. All right, friends. So we're at our last step of making um, our kite and getting it ready for flight. And one of the really important steps left is to make a tail for our kite. And what a tail does is it provides a counterbalance. When your kite's in the air, there's more weight coming down at this corner. And so the, the kite will take flight in a sort of upward direction and keep it balanced by the weight of your tail. So let's make a tail for our kite. It's gonna require the same material we've been working with. And again, you're going to take those handles and trim them off. Be sure to save these handles. They're gonna come in handy in just a moment. Our kite's tail needs to be very long. And so what we're gonna do is make a very long length out of this bag. So I'm, again, I'm going to cut up the sides. Cut up the sides. And now I have a nice long panel for my tail. 
I don't need it to be this wide though, so I am gonna cut it down the middle. Having a tail that's too heavy could hinder your kite's ability to really fly. So I'm gonna keep it lighter by removing some of that material. And then what you wanna do is gather this tail in a few separate points. So you're gonna take your handles and tie little bows around your kite's tail. You can use a lot of different things to make the bows. Sometimes I like using bubble wrap just to create a different design feature or material feature in your kite. You might have a pretty ribbon or string that you could use to add color to your kite's tail. All right. Once you've tied your bows onto your kite's tail, it might be nice to trim them up just on the sides so that they look nice and neat. And one last thing I might do is to cut a taper on the end. so that this taper can line up with your kite's bottom corner nicely. And what you'll do is tape your tail to the kite. Make sure it's really wrapped around that bottom edge securely so that no air gets in there when it's up in the sky. All right, now we're getting closer and closer to being able to fly our kites outside. The last ingredient or material that we need is a nice windy day, so. Let's stay tuned and keep an eye on the weather.